Would you put your silver or gold in a safety deposit box today? Nope. Oh yeah, I was buying silver when nobody was buying silver. Um, and then, you know, it's... What was that? With Tim right now coming into... I do have more. I, I want silver, but you're, you're, you're tempting me with this gold. My word. There was a whole bunch more last time I was here. You know? there, was, yeah, there, was, <laughs> there was enough room to put them all in the, in the tray, tray. That's absolutely right. Um, the Cougarans are actually very, very uh, reasonable. They're around uh, 1855. Okay. The um, Maple Leaf is around 1880 or 1885. So I haven't done the math yet. And the um, American oh, Eagle maple. is just over 19. Is it type one or two here? That's type two. Ooh, that's the reverse I like. <sighs> I, I finally <sighs> getting the one ounce buffaloes. That's what the wholesaler was calling me about. So I haven't had any buffaloes for what two weeks? Yep. So gold buffaloes? No, the silver. Oh, the silver. I, okay. I had gold buffaloes last week. I too. know you did. Yeah, they're gone. And they got a mint bar too yeah these days it's all a matter of you know do i have the time to run down there and pick things up and everything is available um the prices on the gold haven't come down much but um it's it's all available that's the good thing that's that's good except the 10 10th ounce and quarter ounce they're still that aside a quarter ounce are over six hundred dollars the 10th ounce are in the 240 range well, you know I love the gold, but I have to focus a little bit more on the silver. Are these 2021s? They all are, yeah. Oh. I have uh, three more tubes. Three. Wow. And put a put a comment if you would love to play in Tim's vault. Because <laughs> that is just, that looks like a lot of fun, man, right in there. Oh, okay. All right, I'll pick this up. Can I ask you a question, though? Yes. So I get a lot of uh, emails from brand new stackers. People are just like dabbling this for the first time. And I think a lot of them are a little bit concerned about how to do it. And one of the questions is, should I stack silver, Yankee, if I have debt? What's your thoughts on people focusing on gold and silver if they have debt? I guess it really depends on how much debt you're talking about. I mean, if you have, um, you know, heavy mortgage, um, whether you buy silver or not, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference. Okay. Uh, if you're talking about, you know, credit card debt, things like that, I'd pay that stuff off you know, as soon as you can. Um, and that also depends on the interest rate. If you, you've got a mortgage that's 3%, um, might as well keep it because it's going to get worse. And... Um, but if you have, you know, anything, credit card, you know, small loans, I'd get rid of those. Do you think they should be using their credit card to buy this stuff? Um, well, the credit card percent that we're charged is three and a quarter percent. The percentage on the debit cards is about 1.25%. Mm. So, and if you don't mind paying the, the cost of a credit card to the merchant, I, I suppose you can go ahead and do that, but, um, you know, cash or a check is probably a lot better. What's a good tip for new stackers as they're just starting out and they don't have a lot of money, right? A lot of them are, are you know, struggling from paycheck to paycheck, but they do want to protect what little they may have yeah. and they want to get into silver, especially. What's a good suggestion for them? It looks like the, the price of the one ounce rounds and one ounce bars is staying pretty steady. Um, it's, you know, we're, we're over 23 now in silver and they're only 27, which is, you know, it's less than $4. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, that's, that's not a bad deal. Uh, I mean, we used to be able to sell them for $2 over. I remember uh, that. But it's, you know, at, at, um, 27, I don't think we even see any better than that because the paper price is still way too low. How often should they buy? Would you suggest maybe little purchases, one or two rounds at a whack, or is there any benefit to going a full tube? It's when it, whenever you can, you know, afford to spend a little extra cash, it's fine. I don't mind if somebody comes in and buys one coin at a time. That's you know, 
I used to do that, you know, back in the day. You personally? Oh yeah, I was buying silver when nobody was buying silver. Um, and then, you know, it's... What was that? Oh, in the late 70s. Oh. I mean, there were, there weren't many around, but you, you, they're still around today. They were all called World Trade Units. And um, they weren't very expensive either. <laughs> Like three to five dollars. Oh my goodness. So you were stacking before we were even calling it stacking. Oh, I had, um, when I came in here, I had probably three or four bags of junk silver. And, you know, I had one in a safety deposit box and it ruined the box. <clears throat> so when I went to close out the box, I had to pay for it. You ruined the box? Oh yeah, there were, there were 100 ounce bars and bags of junk in the same. It was one of the big safety deposit boxes. What'd you do to it? Well, the bottom bowed out. <laughs> those, those boxes are on rails. They're only about an inch wide, but they, they have to be open top and bottom in case the feds have to get into it. You know, if they want to get into this box, they can either go through the top or the bottom. And um, you know, I went there to pull out, you know, I put my key in and she put her key in and I yanked it and I could not budge it because the bottom had bowed out that wouldn't clear the rails. So yeah, I had to stay there an hour and a half and wait till the, you know, the locksmith came in and he destroyed the box and I emptied my contents out and then I had to go pay for it. Would you, would you put your silver or gold in a safety deposit box today? Nope. You wouldn't do it? No. Why? Um, just because the, the feds don't have to ask your permission to get into it. They can just do it. They can just do it. And it's getting that way. And if they're gonna authorize the IRS to examine every transaction over $600, mm -hmm. um, it's a baby step between that and um, the IRS hounding you to make um, keep an explanation for everything you're spending or anything, you know, for every dollar you get in. I mean, they, they, they're giving them way too much control. Is it just a step before they feel like they can just take what you have in a bank if they if need be, declare being, a holiday? It's being done in some countries in Europe. You know, you you show up with a bunch of cash that you've saved over the years and you can't on the spot uh, tell them exactly where you got it from. They'll take it. I mean, if you get involved in a car accident and you've got a lot of cash in your car, what do you think they're going to do? Say, oh, well, you better put that in a safe place. No, they're gonna probably take it. Well, I'm not gonna break this tube up. I think I'll just take the whole tube. Sounds like a good Sounds deal. Sounds like a good deal. All right, and there's just a few left, right? I have three more other than these two, yeah. Okay. How often do you go down to your wholesaler? I've been going down there three times a week. Um, I haven't been down there this week. Monday was kind of slow. Um, Tuesday was very busy. But um, I'll probably go down there either tomorrow or Friday. Okay. Pick up more stuff. Check out Tim Marshner's shop, the coin and stamp shop here in Manchester, New Hampshire. I'll put the link and all his information in the description below. Thanks a lot, Tim. Thank Appreciate you. it.